Hey everyone, today we're going to be making a CS2 external ESP using IMGY and an external overlay. So let's just hop right into it. So we're just going to name our project. I'm choosing an empty project for C++. Alright, so here we have our name. So I've created the uh, project, so I'm just going to hide all files. The default ones are going to shit, and we're going to create a source file, and we're also going to create an external file. Sorry, I mean folder. Alright, so in the external folder, we're going to create a IMGY. Uh, folder and in source we're going to create a main.cpp a memory.h and we're also going to create a vector.h all right so next we're going to be getting um imgui so i've headed on to imgui's github page uh we're just going to hit releases and download uh just scroll all the way down here and you're going to hit source code all right so i have it here uh what we're gonna need are these files uh so what i'm gonna do is just i'm gonna copy them over so head over here into imgy and paste it uh next we're also gonna have to head over to backends in imgy and we're gonna have to get dx11 uh yep these two and we're also gonna have to get win32 so my memory class is gonna be available in the description and uh, then we'll get on to making our vector class. All right, so uh, I've got my memory class here. All right, so I have my memory class, and you'll find a slightly different one on my paste bin, but, you know, we won't be using any of the other things, so this will work for now. So change this to release uh, x64, since CSGO is 64 bits. Head into our properties, change this to uh, 20. Then you're going to head into advanced, multibyte. And head into linker inputs we need to use d3d11 uh, then in system we're gonna have to change this to windows since we're making a windows application and in vc++ directories we're gonna have to use our uh, include directory so navigate over to your external folder and um, choose your imgy folder so here great so that's done now let's move on to our vector class first we're gonna have to include numbers and cmath uh, and next we're gonna have to make a uh, view matrix struct you can find these anywhere there are thousands of them you choose whichever one or you can copy mine uh right so once you've written that out we can move on to our actual vector struct right so once you've written this out don't worry uh it's giving errors just because we haven't defined z uh y or x yet but we'll define that later uh right so now we need to make our operator overload so this is like minus uh plus divided by multiplied you get the point uh yeah so you can almost just copy these just change this and uh this You'll need to write uh, one out and then just copy the rest. Uh, you can also create like bigger than, smaller than, is equal to, you know, stuff like that. But we won't be needing that for this project. But if you ever have um, nothing to do, then go for it. I'm actually going to define XYZ now just because it's kind of annoying me. And it's really as simple as that. That's all you have to do. Um, now we need to make our world to screen function. Now, same thing, we, you can find this anywhere, just use the one that works the best for you, or you can use mine. Uh, since this is just like backend shit, you can use really cryptic names for this. By the way, this is world to screen. Don't forget that, that's really important. Um, just use really cryptic names, it doesn't really matter because you won't be seeing this again as long as you do it right. Also, you're going to want to define screen width and screen height now in your main.cpp. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, we're going to use get system metrics, uh, which uses windows.h. So once you define that, you can literally just do this. So we're using get system metrics to get our width and our height. So for me, that would be uh, 1920 and 1080. Back in our vector class, we're going to now uh, create our function. All right, so that's a lot to write out, but uh, you know, I believe in you. You got it, bro. So now we're going to define our x and y. So using screen width and screen height. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, we need to actually include vector.h in our um, project here. So vector.h. And we can also include our mem.h before our vector.h. There we go. Sorry about that. And we also need to get our Y. Uh, the reason we're doing this is to get the center of our screen, which will be useful later. All right, great. We're almost done. Now we just need to return X, Y, and W. All right, so that's our world to screen function. Uh, WTS for me, but you can call it whatever you want. Uh, once you have something similar to this, then we can move on to our main.cpp and create our overlay. All right, so I'm in my main.cpp. Let's include our IMGUI and uh, the shit needed for IMGUI. Uh, all right, so your include should look like this. We need dwmapi.h d3d11.h and windows x.h 
uh, this is for some obscure ass function. I could probably do it some uh, other way, but I don't really want to do that. <laughs> so let's move on to making our overlay. Uh, so we're going to jump into IMGUI. Sorry, I forgot to refresh there. Don't forget to include this. Uh, so head into our Win32 and we're just going to copy this. As you can see, it's an extern. This basically just tells the compiler, hey, this function exists. Don't worry about it. You know, source, trust me, bro. Uh, let's create it. And we're also going to need a window procedure. So, I mean, I just kind of found this off Google. I'm not going to lie. And I've always just been using it and it's been fine for my overlays. So, you know, go ahead and copy me. Go ahead and find something else. Go ahead and write it yourself. You know, it's a good learning experience. But uh, I've used this for a while and it's worked without problems. So follow along all right so here's the obscure function i was talking about when you've uh, created your window procedure at least using mine this is why you need windows x uh, .h. besides that it's a very basic uh window procedure you don't really need anything more uh, it's for an overlay you know um so let's move on to our actual entry point of the program so since it's um a windows program we need to do this so it's a win main don't forget to spell that correctly so i'm going to take you along when i'm writing this so h instance uh, we're going to define that as instance. Uh, we have a choice for another H instance, but we don't really need that. Uh, a P string, which we don't need either. So we're just going to skip over it. And we're also going to need this to show the window later. All right, so let's actually start off by making our uh, memory object. So unless you've been coding C++ for less than five minutes, you'll know what an object is. Anyways, I believe in you. Uh, you're definitely not just pacing right now. So let's make an object. All right. So this opens a handle to CS2. Uh, I would recommend doing um, handle hijacking for this, but uh, I'm not going to be showing that in this tutorial, maybe in the future. Uh, then we need to get our clients. Great. So that's our clients. Next, we need to uh, make our window class. This is our window class. Uh, the size is obviously the size of, well, the window class. Um, the window procedure is our own. Instance is our instance. And then the name can be whatever you want. So next, let's register our class. And we're calling our window procedure. Oh, sorry, not uh, window class, not procedure. All right, next, let's create our window. Uh, we'll use topmost, transparent, and layered for this. Uh, so we're using transparent because we will want the window to be transparent, obviously, and we're using layered so we can click through it without issues. Next, we're going to be calling our name. Call it as a pop-up. We don't want any position set yet. Uh, width will be our screen width, and height will obviously be our screen height. Next will be null pointer because we don't have a parent for this um, window, nor is it a menu. And instance will call our uh, window class instance. And next we can just uh, add null pointer. All right, we still have a lot of stuff to do. All right, we still have a lot to do, so let's keep moving. All right, next we set layered window attributes uh, on our overlay. Doesn't matter what color you set here because we're passing uh, this, uh, what's it called? We're passing LWA alpha. So it doesn't really matter. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, this sets our area of the window. All right, here comes a boring shit where we set up our uh, swap chain uh, for our uh, D3D11. Sorry, DirectX 11. All right, so basically all you need to know here that's important is this is our refresh rates, um, aka well, FPS. And that's all you really need to know. If you want to make it smoother, you can increase this or get a better computer, you know, depending on... Um, well, depending on a lot of factors. Uh, next, we need to create our device. All right, so I've gone and created the uh, device. Like, this is a lot of fucking random shit you don't really need to uh, care about, but it's still needed for the uh, compiler. All right, guys, good job. Uh, now we show our window and update it. So we can create our context now for IMGUI. And also, don't forget to set a style. This doesn't really matter since it's an overlay. Uh, you can create a window on your overlay. I've done that before. It's actually really fun setting up... Uh, like arrow keys for um, the different options, but it doesn't really matter. Change this to whatever you want. I usually use dark for my menus, but I'll go with classic for now. All right, so now we have to display it. All right, now we need to create a Boolean variable for if um, our overlay is running. And if it ever isn't running, then we'll exit IMGUI and uh, destroy our windows and such. All right, so now we need our message loop. All right. Let's check if we're not running here. Oh, uh, let's create our new frame now. All right, so don't forget to add IMGUI render here. So now we need to set our color to zero, uh, because if we don't, I'll show you what happens. Yeah, so that'll happen if you don't set the color correctly. So, you know, let's set the color correctly. Uh, so let's set our device context to render our targets. Nice. And let's also render our uh, draw data, which we'll use later to draw uh, rectangles. And then let's present. Um, so if you set this to 1, it'll use vsync, which I don't like to do usually. 
because it, while it's a lot more performant, it usually ends up a lot more laggy. But you can test with VSync and see if it you know works for you. If you're not going to be sharing it with any friends or anything, it'll probably be fine to use VSync. But personally, I'd like to just use it use uh, without VSync. All right, so that's that done. Now we need to uh, shut down IMGUI, destroy context, and uh, we also need to release our swap chain uh, if we're ever exiting. Because if we ever get to this point, that means we're like exiting the program. So right, so once you've written this down, we're almost done with uh, well, at least with the overlay. Uh, next, we destroy the window and unregister our class, and then we're done. Uh, right, and now we return zero. All right, so we're officially done with our overlay. Um, there are thousands of them out there, so feel free to use anyone that you like more. But this has served me well. Um, so let's create the actual sheet now. Alright, so before we continue with our sheets, we're gonna have to make a new render function. Sorry, a new render class. So, let's create a render.h. Well, it's not even a class, it's an actual namespace. You know, it gets tired after coding this much. So we're gonna create a struct for our colors. Nice, so that's our struct. Then we create our color function. Great, so that's all we need. Uh, now we create our render namespace. Uh, and now we have to draw a rectangle, so we're gonna need void. Uh, and then draw rect. We're gonna need an int x, int y, int width, and a int height. Sorry, h. And we're gonna need our color here. So we'll define that as color. And this is RGB, so that is the struct, is what it's referring to. And we need an int thickness too. So the function is very simple actually. I'll walk you through it. So it's imgui get background draw list and then we need to add a rect and this is i'm vec2 since it's two uh, vector points x and y uh, then we need i'm vec2 which is x plus width and then y plus height and then color we'd find that as color two zeros because we don't want rounding or any extra flags and thickness is our thickness all right, great. So this should return no errors. This should be fine. Uh, don't forget to also include render.h. I've already done that though. Uh, next, we're going to need offsets. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for the uh, dumper where you can get offsets. So next, we can get into our main sheet loop. But first, we need to define some offsets. So first is our local player. So this is our local player. It's a human pointer and we're reading client plus DW local player. Uh, next is our local origin. We're using uh, our um, vector three struct. Uh, we're using local players since we're getting our, well, local origin, and we're using the uh, vec origin offsets. Next is our view matrix. Here, uh, we're making use of our view matrix struct, and we're calling it view matrix, and it's our client plus DW view matrix. Next is very basic. It's our entity list, and our entity list is also a human pointer and our client. And next is our local team, and our local team is an int, and it's our local player plus team. So let's get into our for loop so i like to say player index but it's fine if you just call it like i or something which is the standard but um it makes a lot more sense for my just mind to uh, read player index instead of like i when we're iterating through it so first is our list entry uh so these are the new calculations for list entry so in csgo you just you just iterate through uh, your entity lists but this um game is a lot more complicated with the um entity lists and the different entity types but uh, we'll get through it together uh so just check if you we got our list entry here and then now we can get our player now check if we got our player uh next we need to get our player pawn and list entry too so our player is a u and pointer which is and is also list entry plus 120 and then times our player index and 0x1ff used to get our hp but they recently added an update where you have to get um, another controller instead of this. Anyways, let's check if we got our list entry too. Uh, next, we can get our PCS player pawn. So this is um, a UN pointer. It's a list entry 2 plus 120 times player pawn and 0x1ff. Uh, so it's the same of this, but instead of player index, we're using player pawn. Same as always, check if we got it. Alright, so next we can check if the player is alive. So, uh, it actually used to be player pawn plus offsets and health, but they actually did recently change it. So do keep in mind, this, uh, this stuff can break, but you can always check for uh, on unknown sheets, uh, where people are usually having the same problem. Um, so before, you could just check if the player wasn't alive with um, if and not health. 
which would return zero. But in CS2, it's a lot better to check if they have um, equal to or less than zero health or more than 100. So basically, you just do this check. Next, we can check if our PCS player pawn is equal to our local player and if it isn't then that means we won't render our own player or sorry if it is so this makes it so we don't render our own player next we need to define our vector spots so uh, our player origin and uh, the head all right so this is our origin pcs player one plus uh, vec origin uh, I call this origin because we have to write this one out a lot. Local origin isn't used as much, so that's why it gets a longer name. Since we aren't using bone matrix, uh, plus 75F is fine for now. Uh, if you do add a bone matrix, it should be very easy to implement. Next, we can get our screen position and our screen head. And we're using our uh, world to screen function here. And uh, calling our view matrix as the argument. And we need to also get screen head. Uh, next, we define height and width. Uh, since width can't really change, we just use uh, divided by 2.4. Um, you can also use like eye position, like where they're looking to like rotate the box, but we're not doing that in this tutorial. Uh, next we can define our colors for the box. So if you want a uh, teammate and enemy, I usually do that, but since we're only uh, rendering enemy this um, in this tutorial, uh, I'll just call it enemy. I'll render it as a red since it's a bad guy. Uh, next, we're actually going to change our world to screen, and we're going to be adding a check in the actual uh, world to screen function. So this checks if they're behind us, and if they are, uh, return false. Also, while you're here, don't forget to uh, define this. I forgot to, and uh, I ended up with a lot of errors. So make sure to define this as an extern integer screen width and also don't forget screen height. Uh, next I have a function from my own memory class that I like to use a lot but um, this obviously isn't a necessity. So this just checks if the window is in the foreground which is uh, very nice for ESPs. So next we can draw rectangles. Uh, I'll code this with you. I'm not going to cut here. So we call our render namespace and draw a rectangle Then we do screen head dot x minus width divided by two uh, and then for our y we can call screen head dot y sorry not a capital s there uh, and then we call width and as you can see here age that means height which we defined here uh, and then we can call our enemy rgb structs and then I like to set my thickness at 1.5 and this should build. So as you can see, uh, that's actually weird. It's rendering your own teammates, but uh, I guess I'll fix that later. But you know, uh, it's actually pretty nice since I'm already here. Um, rendering our teammates without problem, putting boxes around them, also them. It's also laggy since it's external, but there are a lot of ways you can fix that. But um, thank you for watching my tutorial. It's um been a very basic cs2 esp uh i've enjoyed coding it with you uh, um, i hope you enjoyed watching um i hope this was a learning experience and not just a pace for you um and i really hope you have a good day bye bye hey guys so uh post me here i actually forgot to add the check for the player team so we can actually do that right now so after player just add a int player team equals mem dos read int and player plus offset team num. Uh, sorry semicolon two and then if player team is equal to local team then you can continue yeah sorry guys i totally missed that